Okay. High five. Good girl. Are you going through a hard time right now? Are you being persecuted for your faith? Well, there were many before us that went through this. So we're going to take a look at Jeremiah 15 today. And we're going to rely on God's assurance right here at the end of this race. And cry out to him humbly. Pray to the Lord and ask him for help. We can always rely on God's assurance when everything else fails in this world. Welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. Well, guys, I appreciate you being here. I know that we have different trials and tribulations that we're going through. But I want you to do this study with me and forget about everything else. Come over here and hang out with me and let's give all the glory to Jesus because he is so good to us. He laid his life down for us on Calvary. So let's serve the kingdom and lead others to him and lift one another up while we're still waiting for him to rapture us out of here. I love you and I appreciate you being here. Let's go ahead and open up a prayer and then we'll get started. Father, I come to you now and give you thanks for laying your life down for hours on the cross. I proclaim the gospel to be true, and I believe that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one true God, the true Messiah. Father, while we wait patiently and humbly for you to rapture us home, I ask that you guide these studies and let there be no interference, and let them be your words and not mine. Lord, I pray today for the trials and tribulations that these families and children are going through. As they cry out to you and pray to you, Lord, I pray that you make a way for them and that you speak peace be still in the different storms that are in their lives. We love you and miss you. We give all the glory to you. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, I wanted to let you know that I am continuing to pray for you and your family and your children and those that are still not saved inside of that family. I know that it's tough right now because you may feel like you're crazy from time to time, constantly proclaiming Jesus, saying that he is coming for us and preaching the gospel, and they're just not listening to you. So I want you to know that you're not alone. I do pray for you guys. And I want you to be lifted up today and know that you can rely on God's assurance. Don't be connected to anything in this world and don't rely on anything except God's word. It is sovereign and it is the governing authority to everything and it cannot make a mistake. So put all your hope and trust in Jesus and lean on him and watch what happens. He's going to make a way. So Jeremiah 15, 15 through 21, it is Jeremiah's prayer and he is crying out to the Lord just like we do. So when I say you're not alone, this is an example of a Christian long before our time that was also crying out to the Lord. He was an excellent prophet, but it doesn't mean that he didn't go through hard times or have a little bit of doubt creep in. So let's take a look at the scripture now and have a great time worshiping the Lord. Jeremiah 15, 15 says, You know, Lord, remember me, take notice of me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. Do not in view of your patience take me away. Know that for your sake I endure reproach. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became a joy to me and the delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, Lord God of armies. I do not sit in a circle of revelers and celebrate. Because of your hand upon me, I sat alone. For you filled me with indignation. Why has my pain been endless? and my wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Will you indeed be to me like a deceptive stream with water that is unreliable? You can see a little bit of that doubt right there and, and asking these questions to the Lord. Take a look at verse 19. It says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you return, then I will restore you. Listen to this. You will stand before me. And if you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. He's talking about getting rid of the doubt, the sin in our lives. Well, where does sin begin? It begins with doubt. That's the very thing that it stems from. So he's saying, if you will extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. This applies to us, guys. I definitely see myself in this, and I'm sure that you can identify with this today. They, for their part, may turn to you, but as for you, you are not to turn to them. Then I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. Imagine a fortified wall of bronze for a moment. Try to get that imagery in your head. It would be very difficult to take that wall down, right? This is where our faith comes in. 
And though they fight against you, they will not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and rescue you, declares the Lord. So I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you from the grasp of the violent. Like I said, I can definitely relate to this. If you're being persecuted for your faith, if you're being blocked on a platform, if you're being made fun of at your job or inside of your house with your family and friends, then you can also definitely relate to this. But look at what Jeremiah is choosing to do. Instead of running to anything in the world, he's crying out to the Lord, his master, his savior, the master of the universe. This is what he's choosing to do. This is what I urge you to do as well today. All right, let's take a look at a little bit of commentary for what we just read and go further with it. Remember, Jeremiah is in despair. He is crying out to the Lord. So I know you can definitely see yourself in this today like I can. We're going to have hard times before Jesus raptures us out of here, but I'm okay with it because my king told me that these things would happen. So if I need something, I'm going to cry out to him for it. It says, in the midst of Jeremiah's despair, God reassures him of his divine protection, promising to make him a fortified wall. However, this protection is contingent upon Jeremiah's return to God, indicating that he should not deviate from his prophetic duty. God promises that if Jeremiah speaks worthy words, he will be as precious as silver in God's sight. Jeremiah 15 offers a heart-wrenching dialogue between the prophet Jeremiah and God. As Judah continues in disobedience, Jeremiah intercedes for his people, only to be met with divine rejection and an affirmation of impending judgment. Amid personal despair, Jeremiah receives a renewed promise of protection, providing a glimpse of hope amidst a backdrop of desolation. Let me tell you something, guys. The Lord is on the way. He doesn't make any mistakes, and he is exact and precise in every single thing he does. Even as I sit here and deliver this message, how awesome is it to know that Jesus knew that I would be doing this very thing before time even began. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. And I promise you, if you are a born-again Christian watching this message, living in the day and age that we do, you know that you're going to be censored with your speech. You know you're going to have hard times at church, inside of your household, and everywhere that you go because of who and what you stand for. The point is, is that you don't give up. You remain patient and humble. And if you need anything, then you cry out to the Lord and you lean on him even more because he's never going to let you down. Guys, I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. If the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now, or even tonight, just do what we always say over here. You keep looking up and we'll see you up top.